It's the first ever world's most beautiful transsexual pageant. five of the contestants who competed in that very pageant. And if you thought they looked fierce in their swimsuits, wait till you see them in their sexy evening gowns. Come on out, ladies. <laughs> Very nice, very spectacular. Okay, everyone can take a gorgeous seat. Very nice. Okay, uh, Maria, I want to start with you. Um, when you when you look at the picture of you as a young man, um, what do you see? Um, you know, it's actually uh, I look good, huh? I did look good. Actually, I did. I did look good. Now, you, yeah, you, you were can't very, say very I became handsome. a girl because I was ugly, you know. So, um, you know, it's a part of who I am. It's made me who I am today. Uh, my family knew this person for years and totally embra embraced the person that I am today. But it's not like I look at it and I feel, you know, bad or... I embrace it. That's part of who I am. That's part you of my do journey. Embrace it. I know there's be... a lot of pain usually with some, with some other transsexuals so that you, you embrace him. And what yes. was your name before? Uh, my name used to be Lewis. Well, the producers of the Trantasia documentary followed Maria from the pageant in Las Vegas to her home in Los Angeles. And her life's journey is as striking as her beauty. And before that, I really want you to check out what she looked like as a guy, because she was fine. She really I was fine. Her. Check it out. <laughs> Maria Roman feels she's living a life she never thought possible, a life beyond her wildest dreams. As a little boy, I never thought that, that I could become an attractive woman that a man could potentially take home and get married to. It's interesting because I feel even though I have changed so much externally, I still see myself the same way. I have changed the outer to match how I feel inside, but I've always felt the way I feel today. When I was growing up, my name... <laughs> Lewis Scott <laughs> How Roman. could you say that? <laughs> because it's true. You can't lie. Maria and her family were estranged for almost 10 years. The first thing we did was cry and hug each other. We didn't think of anything else. Yeah. And finally, all I did was grab her boobs. I said, oh my God. <laughs> Today, her brother is her biggest fan. It must not be easy. Because when you have people that look at you and like, what the heck is this? Instead of saying, how are you? Instead of getting to know who the person is inside, people just start judging it. It's a person that's got a lot of heart, and I have a lot of respect for it. If you don't fit what society says a man or a woman should look like or be, you're a freak. So I guess I do see life through the eyes and the soul of me, Maria. And if you want to say that's a woman, that's a woman. I know that I'm not a man. <laughs> Actually, very well adjusted. Um, well adjust, more adjusted than a lot of women, you know, in the world. Um, but I know that you were not always this comfortable, and there's been some low times in your life. So yes. tell us about that. That the dark time. Well, um, when I decided to actually um, pursue my my how I felt that she lived, you know, doors closed for me. So I ended up on the streets, um, having to do crazy things to be able to just make my ends meet and survive. Crazy things like. Um, I used to, I did uh, sex work when I was 20, you know. Sex work like prostitution? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was a tough time in my life. Um, but it's good that I've, um, you know, all that, all those experiences have brought me to the place I am today. Mm -hmm. and, and then there was a see, super I'm, love. I'm blessed to have uh, a family that loves me and accepts me for who I am. Yeah. <laughs> for who I am. to tell us about the time that was the, the lowest low when you when you tried to take your life. I talked about that at the top of you the know, show. I was, saying 18, there's a lot of pain. I was 18 and I was in high school. I used to play football. I was popular in high school. Um, 
externally everything seemed right. You know, I was an attractive man, I had a girlfriend, but I was so, I was dealing with so much pain that I could not share it to anybody. And in those days, it's not like I could go to the internet mm -hmm. and find what I was dealing with. So I tried to take my life and thank God I didn't. I'm glad I wasn't successful because many blessings have came my way. Mm -hmm. and. One of them, the fact that after all that time not being with my family, today my, you know, my mom came to my wedding. Um, and your brother's squeezing your boobs. He is. Girl, he did squeeze my boob too. Why did he do that? You know, because he's funny. We're funny. You know, we're Puerto Rican, so sometimes we're a little ghetto with each other. You know? <laughs> <laughs> this is what it is, you know? Okay. Um, after rice and beans, it's, you know, jokes and laughter. You know? so, okay. And now you're in a relationship. Tell I us have. about that. I have been married 13 years. I'm very blessed. And <laughs> How did, you, how did you meet him? I actually was in a really bad relationship back when I was telling you my, going back to my lowest points. And I had this guy that broke down my door. Um, and I needed I heard to that get, the door was kicked down. He would kick the door. And needed repair. Yeah, he kicked the door down. And um, obviously, I had needed to fix the door. So my girlfriend said, you know, I know this man. He's a carpenter. And he can come and fix your door. And I said, OK. So I called him. He came over. And it was like, he just could not resist me. No, <laughs> And so you've you know, been married for 13 years. When you say married, do you, like, is it illegal? You we mean? went to Vegas. Um, we've been, we, you know, had a ceremony, and I had uh, my family was there. I dressed in white, and it was a beautiful day. It was something since I was a little boy, I always wanted to experience to be with somebody that loved that? me, regardless of what anybody else. Saw. And he loves me for. So who in I Las am. Vegas, it's illegal for a transsexual to marry a man. You know, once you're, uh, it depends. You know, we had. Um, it depends. You know, it depends from state to state. Um, it gets really complicated because mm -hmm. some states even go by your chromosomes, even if you had a s surgery. So it's yeah. it just hard. It's hard for a girl these days. Does it? Does it? Does your husband? Does your husband consider himself straight or gay? You know, like I say, you know, my, lo my he loves me for me. I mean, but what he does he consider himself? We've had those discussions, and he sees me as a woman, you know. Uh, and I think it's it's hard for men that are attracted to transsexuals because there's always that fetish thing behind it, and yeah. and so forth. But he's a man that's been there for me in the lowest point. Were you of my his life. first transsexual, or? Yes, he was married uh, another 13 years to a a, a lady before me, and um, yeah. So I, I'm blessed to have met that. I was blessed that men kicked down that door. <laughs> Okay, to rescue. Okay, I'd like to ask you, your gentleman, stand on up in the blue shirt right here. Do you think you would ever date a transsexual? Say she was, say it was me. And I was like, hi, I'm Tyra, nice to meet you. And then you fall in love with me, but I won't have sex with you. Mm. You don't know why, you just think I'm just so sweet. And then I'm like, I have something to tell you. Basically, I would. If, she, if she's the type of person I want to be with, then she's the type of person that's nice and cool to be with, then yeah. I can't believe you said that. Kudos to you. <laughs> OK, we'll be right back. <laughs> Up next, the gorgeous girls talk about their love lives. I'm dating right now, girl. Ooh. And later, transsexual beauty tips that you can use. When I want to look like a little bit sexier and more voluptuous up here. Oh, my gosh. No pageant would be complete without a fierce swimsuit and evening gown competition. And this pageant is no different. Adorning the runway are glittering sequins, plunging necklines, and legs for days. And somewhere in this bevy of lovely ladies is the world's most beautiful transsexual. OK, so now we're going to speak with our next contestant. Oh, check her out. It's Tiara. Tiara Russell is a living contradiction. Unlike other transsexuals who feel they are all woman, both inside and out, Tiara has always felt like a male inside and only female on the outside. I'm Chicago's very own international diva. And I know when I walk these streets every day in my life, since I've been living like this, I know that for a fact, I turn heads and, and horns will blow when they see me. And that's a guaranteed, with respect. I call her Terry. Well, she always called me Terry anyway. So Terry, Terry is a unisex name, so it can go for a guy or a girl. I prefer to, to say Terry because that is my Terry. <laughs> OK. <laughs> yeah. 
she found my purse with makeup in it. And I came home from school and she was like, who makeup is this? And I was like, it's Rhonda's. 